So we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, we were actually recapitulating the entire class and we were, we were at the point of uh, the relationship between the airports and airlines and we were talking about the relationship being symbiotic in nature, synchronistic in nature and, uh, you know, complex in nature. And normally the relationship, how it is governed is they have agreements and contracts between each other, the airlines and the airport. They have a contract and predominantly the relationship is governed by a user agreement by whatever name you may want to call it whatever way they want to draft it they may call it as a, primarily they might have a memorandum of understanding and then they may execute a contract called as a user contract or airports user contract or aviation user contract or so on so whatever the name of the airport is and then they say the user contract or, or user agreement whatever name or usage agreement or airports usage agreement whatever name it is so then they would have certain clauses so clauses with respect to the terms and conditions that are agreed by both the parties, the obligations, rights, and duties of the airlines, as well as the airports, or in certain circumstances, how they would, um, you know, you know, um, share the responsibilities. For example, if it is a huge airlines, and they are, you know, they use the airport, you know, at on a larger scale. So, for example, with respect to securities, they might say that, okay, we will also bear along with you, along with the airport security charges. So if you're contracting with someone, we should know about it. So the airlines also should participate in the decision-making process. Of course, normally it happens to tendering and after the tendering is done, so airlines also participate in the decision-making process, whom to finalize. Okay, of course the highest bidder, but again, whether they should finalize with that particular person and then how they go about it. Or it could be that, okay, whoever you're appointing, we will we will pay 50% of the cost or 30% of the cost or 25% of the cost. It depends what is the understanding. So there is uh, no clear cut draft that can be really given, uh, you know, it is it, it is there is no standard draft in fact of course there will be certain standard clauses like jurisdiction clause sometimes even the way a dispute clause is you know really drafted but again disputes it depends mostly uh, you know conflicts uh, which you know evolve into a dispute normally it goes to arbitration if the parties decide saying that uh, you know, in case of any disputes, the first option would be to resolve the matter amicably. And after that, in case it doesn't resolve, then let us, you know, knock the doors of the court. Or mostly it would be by arbitration because such kind of, uh, in the airline industry and in the aviation sector, normally disputes are, um, you know, resolved mostly by arbitration. So likewise, there are several clauses, payment clause, charges, fees clause, payment fees clause. Then you have maintenance clause. Then again, it may be in the form of a clause or it may be a, you know, a different agreement altogether. There may be SLAs, service le level agreements and so on. So there is this agreement which you know, binds airports and airlines together. Apart from that, there are different charges we spoke about. We spoke about aeronautical charges, how aeronautical charges are computed or calculated depending upon the passengers which, you know, who depart from the airport, the number of passengers. It depends upon the aircraft, the airlines, the number of passengers they carry each day and the number of passengers exit, that is depart from a particular terminal. And in case it is, and a uh, en route passenger or a passenger who's just stopping over a particular, there is a, you know, a period where a person or a passenger just has a stopover that he or he or she goes en route a particular airport. That means again, the percentage or the charges that may be levied upon this airline would be comparatively, obviously lesser compared to the passengers who exit the airport or depart from a particular terminal as a final, as a, you know, 
a, a passenger who has already reached their final destination. So again, computation of aeronautical charges depends upon whether or, or not the it is the passenger's final destination. That particular terminal is the passenger's final destination or not. So that is aeronautical charges. Then we spoke about non-aeronautical charges. We spoke about free zones that come under the ambit of non-aeronautical charges. Then we spoke about security charges and so on. So that's all for today's class. If you have any questions, please ask me. And for your attendance, of course, it's, it's like quite clear. Attendance will be granted. Uh, thank you. I don't have any question regarding this chapter. Thank you. I don't have any. Okay. So next class, we are going to go in depth and learn about airports operations. The third chapter is going to be airport operations. Okay, so thank you so much and see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. See you. Sure. Bye-bye.